वेलकम टू ज्ञान की पाठशाला ज्ञान की पाठशाला में आप सभी का स्वागत है लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल लर्नर्स विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द इंक्रीजिंग ट्रेंड ऑफ बायोलैटरल कॉपरेशन एंड कोऑर्डिनेशन अमंग डिफरेंट नेशंस लर्न द सिमिलैरिटीज इन डेवलपमेंट पाथ एंड स्ट्रैटेजीज अमंग चाइना पाकिस्तान एंड इंडिया लर्न अबाउट द ग्रेट लीप फॉरवर्ड प्रोग्राम इन चाइना एंड द रिफॉर्म्स टेकन इन पाकिस्तान एंड इंडिया इन ऑर्डर टू अचीव द इकोनॉमिक स्टेबिलिटी लर्न अबाउट द डेमोक्रेफिक इंडिकेटर्स एंड द कंपेरिजन अमंग चाइना इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान अंडरस्टैंड द जी डी पी ग्रोथ एंड द कंपेरिटिव परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ चाइना इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान लर्न अबाउट द सेक्टर वाइज एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड जी डी पी शेयर इन चाइना इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान लर्न अबाउट वेरियस ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट इंडिकेटर्स अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड लिबर्टी इंडिकेटर्स टू एनहांस द ट्रेंड ऑफ ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट इंडेक्स इन अ कंट्री लर्न अबाउट द डेवलपमेंट स्ट्रैटेजीज वेर डिफरेंट रिफॉर्म प्रोग्राम्स एंड देयर लिमिटेशंस इन चाइना पाकिस्तान एंड इंडिया कंपेरेटिव डेवलपमेंट एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ इंडिया एंड इट्स नेबर्स डेवलपमेंटल पाथ चाइनाज प्रोग्रेशन चाइनाज ट्रेड एंड फिनेंशियल एक्टिविटीज India's emergence as a technology and innovation hub and both countries commerce and investment interactions with other developing nations have been covered extensively in all forms of media most importantly in the midst of the recent global economic crisis china and india's demand for developing country goods proved to be a cushion to the declining flows of resources from advanced nations Great Leap Forward Campaign and Five Year Planning of China. The central idea behind the Great Leap Campaign was to industrialize the nation by making use of the massive supply of cheap labor and avoid having to import heavy machinery. The government also sought to avoid both social stratification and technical bottlenecks involved. in the soviet model of development but sought political rather than technical solutions to do so the key tasks highlighted during five year planning were to concentrate efforts on the construction of numerous large and medium sized industrial projects so as to lay that the primary foundations of china's socialist industrialization it aimed to develop the agricultural producers cooperatives to help in the socialist transformation of the agriculture and handicraft industries to put capitalist industry and commerce on the track of state capitalism so as to facilitate and socialist transformation of private industry and commerce economic reforms and policies state owned enterprises to special economic zones the phase of state owned enterprises in china found the futuristic way towards the building of special economic zones scs for the industrializations the special authentication allows these scs to utilize an economic management system that is more attractive for foreign and domestic firms to do business in than the rest of mainland china story of pakistan developmental path of pakistan pakistan followed the mixed economic system with coexistence of public and private sectors in the late 1950s by the mid of 1960s pakistan introduced a variety of regulated policy framework for the growth of domestic industries In the case of agriculture the introduction of green revolution and increase in public investment led to the rise in the production of food grains During this period Pakistan 
also received financial support from Western nations, which helped the country in motivating economic growth. Mixed Economic Model for the Development After several experiments in economic restructuring, Pakistan currently operates a mixed economy in which state-owned enterprises account for a large portion of gross domestic product, GDP. Initially, Pakistan's economy was largely based on private enterprise. Further, changes were made during 1980s when an Islamic economy was introduced, which outlawed practices forbidden by Sharia, like charging interest on loans, riba, and else. But after 1990s, it started to privatize, in whole or in part, large sectors of the nationalized economy. Nationalization Drive and Its Significance The nationalization program began during 1972 with a vision to promote economic democracy, liberalization and an initial mainstream goal to put Pakistan in line with the state of progressivism. The country activated the program to bring three major mega corporations, steel mills, railways and international airlines under government ownership in an attempt to improve its structure and to elevate its profitable process. Despite its success in its formative years, such policy measures programs met with an extreme level of spontaneous demonstration and international and national opposition that left disastrous effect on Pakistan's national economy until it was replaced with the privatization program set forward by the then Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif in 1990, following the same footstep of India. Demographic Indicators One Child Norm in China and Comparison with India and China The estimated population is 1,252 million in India and 1,357 million in China and 182 million in Pakistan. But the annual growth rate of population between 2002 and 2010 was in India 1.24 and in China 0.49. Pakistan had the rate 1.65. In the population density, that is per square kilometer, China scores 145 and India and Pakistan have 421 and 236. China controlled the fertility rate too. It has 1.6, while India and Pakistan have 2.6 and 3.3 respectively. The one-child policy was thus introduced in 1979 in response to an explosive population growth in China. By the late 1970s, China's population was quickly approaching the 1 billion mark and the Chinese government was forced to give serious consideration to curbing the population growth rate. The policy was most effective in urban areas where it was well received by nuclear families. General Indicators and Declining Sex Ratio All of these three countries have declining sex ratio, which is 934 in India, in China 929, and Pakistan has 947. India's child sex ratio, that is, below 6 years, is now the lowest as it has been in 70 years, possibly the worst ever. The latest decline was from 927 girls per 1,000 boys in 2001 to 918 in 2011. The child sex ratio, if it does not improve, will lead to a deficit of 23 million women in the 20 to 49 age group by 2040. Urbanization rate in China, India and Pakistan China has the highest degree of urbanization followed by Pakistan 
while India is still having a large majority of rural population. India has 28% population living in urban areas, where in China and Pakistan, they have 53% and 39% respectively. GDP Growth China and India Consistent GDP Growth Rate in China China is the mode of adjusting for purchasing power parity, PPP, become second in the world in 1999 and has toppled America to become the biggest economy since 2014. From 1979 until 2010, China's average annual GDP growth was 9.91% based on the current price. The country's average annual GDP growth is, in these 32 years was 15.8%, reaching an historical high of 36.41% in 1994 and a record low of 6.25% in 1999. Annual Growth Rate of GDP, China and India The GDP annual growth rate in China averaged 9.63% from 1989 until 2018, reaching an all-time high of 15.40% in the first quarter of 1993 and a record low of 3.80 in the fourth quarter of 1993. GDP Growth Pakistan and India GDP Growth in Pakistan Pakistan was a middle class and predominantly agricultural country when it gained independence in 1947. Pakistan's average economic growth rate in the first five decades, 1947 to 1997, has been higher than the growth rate of the world economy during the same period. Average annual real GDP growth rates were 6.8% during 1960s. 4.8% in 1970s and 6.5% in the 1980s. Recently, according to the World Bank data, the poverty in Pakistan fell from 6.5% in 2003 to 6.8% in 2008. In 1999, 1999 the nominal GDP per capita of Pakistan is now $1,641. In 2018, Annual Growth Rate of GDP, Pakistan and India GDP Growth Rate in Pakistan averaged 4.91% from 1952 until 2016, reaching an all-time high of 10.22% in 1954 and a record low of minus 1.80% 1 in 1952. The GDP annual growth rate in India averaged 6.15% from 1951 until 2018, reaching an all-time high of 11.40% in the first quarter of 2010 and a record low of minus 5.20% in the fourth quarter of 1979. Sector-wide share of employment and the GDP share in 1969-70, agriculture was the biggest commodity producing sector with 38.9% contribution to the GDP, which has declined to 19.53% in financial year 2016-17, as shown that the share of the agriculture has been falling over time in favour of the non-agriculture sector. However, the share of services sector has grown to 59.59% in the last fiscal year, indicating a growing share of the service sector in GDP over time. In 2016, the agriculture sector contributed around 25.23% of the GDP of Pakistan. The portion of 19.69% came from the industry and 55.6% from the services sector. Indicators of Human Development Human Development Index 
एच डी आई द ह्यूमन डिवलपमेंट इंडेक्स एच डी आई इज अ समरी मेजर ऑफ एवरेज अचीवमेंट इन की डिमेंशंस ऑफ ह्यूमन डिवलपमेंट अ लॉन्ग एंड अ हेल्दी लाइफ बींग नॉलेजेबल एंड हैव अ डीसेंट स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लिविंग द एच डी आई यूज द लॉगरिथम ऑफ इनकम टू रिफ्लेक्ट द डिमिनिशिंग इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ इनकम विद इंक्रीजिंग ग्रॉस नेशनल इनकम various indicators of human development index in gdp per capita count of population below poverty line and in the mortality rates access to sanitation literacy life expectancy and malnourishment we can approve that we can observe that china's place is in the forward ranking than india and pakistan in health sanitation and poverty line measurement pakistan did well than india on the other side both of these nations lack in women mortality rate during childbirth in china it is 27 per 1 lakh births but in india and pakistan they are 178 and 174 respectively by the account of the international poverty rate of 3.10 a day india has the largest share of poor among the three countries the general life expectancy at birth in china is 76 years but in india and pakistan they are 68.3 and 66.4 years respectively in education the mean years of schooling for 15 years aged and above is 7.6% in china but in india and pakistan they are 6.3% and 5.1% respectively liberty indicators and democratic participation in order to measure the human development in a country one salient indicator is the extent and mode of democratic participation in social and political decision making of the country we can say it in another way as the extent of awareness of the people about constitutional rights and the importance rule of law to in the country these factors in modern time are increasingly used to understand the overall nature of the human development index of any country development strategies and appraisal the reforms initiated in china by 1978 by 1978 chinese communist party launched the reforms 2 years after the death of communist leader mo zedong china started the household responsibility system in the countryside giving some farmers ownership of their product for the first time southern city shenzhen is made the first special economic zone to experiment with the more flexible market policies in the global perspective by 2005 china sweeps past britain france and italy to become the world's fourth largest economy china freed then its currency yuan from a dollar peg letting it float with a tightly managed band pakistan's changing viewpoint of development by 1988 The economic liberalization in Pakistan refers to a policy measure program in order to promote and accelerate the economic independence and development in the economic context of history of Pakistan. Started in different times in the history of the country, the program was intended and had mainstream goal to promote GDP growth for the national economy and economical and social values in the country india's new economic policy in 1991 the economic liberalization in india refers to the economic liberalization initiated in 1991 of the country's economic policies with the goal of making the economy more market and service oriented and expanding the role of private and foreign investment 
liberalization has been credited by its proponents for the high economic growth recorded by the country in 1990s and 2000s. The overall direction of liberalization has since remained the same, irrespective of the ruling party, although no party has yet solved a variety of politically difficult issues. There exists a lively debate in India as to what made the economic reforms sustainable. Indian government coalitions have been advised to continue liberalization. Summary Let us summarize what we have learnt. In emergence of sustained competition, the developing countries increasingly are becoming inquisitive about the development process pursued by their neighbours. All of these three countries follow the five-year plan pattern of development. It is the development path and the related strategies of them have a uniform trend of concept as being observed for years. Till the early 1980s, the developmental indicators of all these three countries, such as growth rate, a sector-wise contribution towards national income, were similar. Reforms were introduced in 1978 in China, in 1988 in Pakistan, and 1991 in India. China introduced structural reforms on its own initiative, while they were forced upon India and Pakistan by international agencies. We can see that while one-child norm has arrested the population growth in China, but in India and Pakistan, a major change is yet to take place. As noticed in all of these three countries, that the majority of the workforce is still being dependent on the agriculture, that is, the primary sector of the economic settlement of the society. We can see that the transition from the agriculture to manufacturing as being followed by China with a gradual pace classical method. But in the cases of India and Pakistan, it happened directly and abruptly without following the conventional method and its pathways. China's industrial sector has maintained a high growth rate while it is not so in both India and Pakistan. As it has been observed that China is ahead of India and Pakistan on several human development indicators. The specific measures that China took during pre-reform period, unlike rest of these two countries, has attributed to its sustainable development in recent times. While assessing the developmental indicators, one also has to consider the liberty indicators.